Developers are extremely lazy, and I am no exception. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to write the most amount of code as fast as possible while doing the least amount of work. Today, we're talking about window managers, shells, and text editors. Let's get into it. I've been getting a lot of questions in the YouTube comments about the setup that I use when I'm working, and I want to kind of show you guys how I set up my environment to be as efficient as possible. My setup is designed around three core principles. It's speed, simplicity of use, and simplicity of installation. The speed is that I'm giving myself a lot of micro saves in time in terms of me not having to move my hands off the keyboard. I, like I said, am extremely lazy and the sensation of moving my mouse from this window to code to this window to cargo build or whatever, and then to this window to have to go read an address. I feel like I'm burning so much time moving my hand on and off the keyboard that I wanted to get away from that. If, you, if you're if you looking at this environment, this is the default build environment or the default environment for coding. Uh, it comes with you know Ubuntu, you have your default color scheme here for your terminal and you have your, your default text editor. We're gonna talk about how to make this faster for a developer that wants to get away from moving their hand on and off the keyboard to go between their editor, their builder, and their maybe their data sheet, right? This first step in doing this is to use what is called a tiling window manager. That window manager is gonna be i3. So we're gonna install that with sudo apt install i3. I3 is a beautiful window manager that allows the user to not take their hand off the keyboard. That is the primary takeaway from I3. So we're gonna go ahead and install that. I already have it installed. And then we're gonna restart the uh, VM with the I3 window manager spun up. When you restart your environment here, uh, what you're able to do is choose from the window managers that were installed. So by default, you have the Ubuntu default window manager. Uh, we're gonna go down here and choose the I3 window manager and log into our VM. You get I3 to start up. What's gonna happen is um, you'll have this pop-up window here where it'll say, do you wanna generate config you'll hit enter because you're going to choose a modifier key we'll talk about what the modifier key does but essentially the entire i3 ecosystem is designed around you using this modifier key to move windows with your keyboard instead of your mouse so we're going to use alt as our modifier key so now that we are in an i3 tiling window session mwah, it's already beautiful uh, so to create a window, we do either one of two things. We use our modifier key. We hit alt and enter to make a terminal pop up. We'll zoom in on that with control shift plus. And if you want to run another command that is not a terminal, we'll use alt D, which gets this prompt up here at the top. And then we can type the command that we want. So I'll say alt D and then Firefox, for example. This is a tiling window manager, which means that the windows here are next to each other. They automatically get put into these uh, maximized boxes. Using our Alt key, which is our modifier key again, we can hold Alt down and then move with our arrow keys left and right. So over here, I'm in user. I could say I am typing some code and then I can go over here to Firefox my data sheet. Another big piece that's important with the tiling window manager is that down here at the bottom left, I have these numbers, right? You see the number one is kind of small. Um, those are called our workspaces. In my head, when I'm coding, I essentially use multiple workspaces where each workspace number denotes a different thing that I'm using. So for example, if I have Firefox here, I want to put the data sheet, we'll put the Broadcom data sheet in a different uh, workspace because I want that window to not only be full screen, but I don't want it to clutter my thoughts when I'm doing some, when I'm coding, right? So we're going to move this to another workspace. You do that with using your modifier key, you hold down alt while you're holding alt, you press shift and then you move that to another workspace by pressing the number. So we do our modifier shift two, for example. You'll see now down here that a new workspace opened up and we can go and go to that workspace by doing modifier two. So now we can go between the two of these just by like touching a few keys. Also, if we had two terminals, but let's say for example, I'm coding in the one on the left in Vim. So we'll go to my Rusty Pi, my project. So over here I have my code. And then I can now go over here to my right and go between the two of them with literally no time time lost at all. So that makes me extremely fast. I don't have to worry about every time I do a new thing, I move my hand on and off the keyboard. Just such a waste of time. You may be wondering, how do we make i3 pretty? Right now we have basically this kind of gross bar down here with a few pieces of information and we have the, the default Ubuntu background. Uh, we can do that with two primary tools. So the thing I like about i3 is that i3 is extremely extensible, right? Uh, we are able to write a config for the i3 that tells i3 what to do when it starts. We can modify the keystrokes. We can add a lot of our own personal customization that we figure out over time to make i3 more personal. So if you want to have your own custom background, uh, what I did is I made a config file before I started this video. This is my actual config file when I'm working. 
Uh, and at the bottom of the file, I have two commands that run that get started that make my i3 a little prettier. So I start two primary commands. The first is fe or fe, F-E-H. You can sudo apt install that. And all you do with this is you say no, no startup ID. You can use fed to display your custom background, right? So here I have a path to a file. It's just a picture of a bridge. I like that. And then the second one is Compton. Compton makes it so that your i3 windows can be different opacities and colors depending on which window is active. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. We're gonna write that file. Then we're gonna move config.back to config to overwrite it. And then I'm gonna go show you my uh, Compton configs. So we'll go to vim config compton.conf. And all we do here is we say that the inactive opacity Actually, I turned these off, but if you wanted to, you can make your inactive opacity 80, for example, so that you showed which window you were currently in. It makes it a little more obvious. So after we've edited all of those uh, config files, we're going to do our modifier shift R to reset I3, and then boom, now our stuff pops up. So if we make two windows with alt enter enter, you can see the one on the right and the left, they're switching, and one of them is a little darker than the other, which means that it's the one that we're actively in. Also, for the love of God, can we please get away from uh, the default color scheme? I have Solar as dark as my go-to for, for color schemes. I just find the blue and the green to be a lot more pleasing to the eye as opposed to the, you know, horrific purple that Ubuntu comes with by default. I feel like, again, just doing all of this stuff allows me to save so much time not having to move my hand on and off the keyboard it just makes you more efficient of a programmer so now we're talking about shells by default in the linux environment you are put into the regular normal linux shell uh, bin bash i prefer to use a shell that is known as z shell z shell is a shell that is designed with interactivity in mind that has cool things like tab completion that shows you the available options you can do things like you know ls tab put a letter in and it kind of shows you the list of all of the commands that are available to you what i like about z shell the most is the community of uh, extensions that exist for z shell the big one that i use is called oh my zush or oh my zsh Oh my ZSH is cool because there is an entire community of people that are developing themes to make ZSH more interactive. So you go to this website here, oh my ZSH, I'll put that in the description down below. Install oh my ZSH and it's literally just a shell script that you download and run. And we'll install oh my ZSH by putting that script into our command prompt, hit enter. It's going to clone the repo. Say, so do you want to change your shell to ZSH? Yes, of course. Put in your password for sudo to run that, and then boom, we are in oh my zsh inside of Z Shell. If you want to make modifications to your running instance of Z Shell, you're going to edit your zshrc. And that's for a lot of your options for themes and stuff are going to pop up for Z Shell. The big one, if you want to make your Z Shell look like one of the available themes on the oh my zsh website, you're going to go into your zshrc and you saw that line there zsh theme robbie russell so that's one that i like to use by default uh, again talking about simplicity and simplicity of installation robbie russell has the bare minimum features that i like in my shell the big one being the ability to see what branch i'm on in git and if my git uh current state has untracked commits or un un uncommitted changes uncommitted changes uh, the reason I like to have that is because I've had so many instances where I've made changes to a project, I'm, I'm deep in the, in the weeds coding, uh, and then I realize, oh shit, I'm on the wrong branch, and I suddenly get into myself into a, a merge conflict hellscape. So having the ability to see constantly where you're at and the status of your Git, of your Git repo is super useful. All right, next we're talking about text editors. So I know that this is a pretty controversial issue. I think the world of text editors becomes a pretty big holy war between kind of the OG text editors like Nano, Emacs, or Vim up to the more modern ones like Sublime and VS Code and so on. I've used them all and I have to say that my favorite text editor is Vim. The reason being, first of all, Vim is basically anywhere. So if you run Vim, boom, you have Vim. You have all of the major features in terms of the motions, the modes of visual editing, of instrument editing and command line stuff that Vim is known for without any extensions. You can extend Vim. I choose not to because I don't like the sensation of having one environment somewhere where I get used to a way that a text editor feels and looks, and then I move to a new computer or I move to a new VM and suddenly it's all different. If the big thing here is we don't take our hands off the keyboard. You may be thinking, oh, well, Vim doesn't allow you to edit multiple files. It's kind of a pain in the ass to use. You actually have a lot of really cool features that are like a window system built into Vim. The big one, going into the command mode, you can do tab E for edit and hit tab, and you are able to open files in Vim in a tab text editor format. So you can go ahead and open a file like it's a tab 
in Vim and then using the, using the motion GT, we can go between the tabs like it's a regular text editor. And again, being an i3, we can make a window over here to the right. And now we have another window where we can use our cargo commands to build our project. I know that Vim has a pretty high skill curve, learning all the different motions and stuff, being able to use visual mode to like select text and then copy it or delete it. That takes a while, but combining all of these things, combining i3, not taking your hand off the keyboard, using Vim where you're using all the features available and not and efficiently moving around while you're writing code, I think will make you more efficient programmer where over time you may not realize it, but these little saves in time add up and just make you overall able to do more complicated tasks in less time compared to maybe your peers or maybe yourself in the past. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, hit like, hit subscribe. Let me know what you use for your environment down in the comments and then go watch th this video or this video.